Hope you guys are doing great. I'm excited about what God's got going on here tonight. Are you guys excited to get some from God tonight? Yes, that's right. I am super stoked. It's going to be a good time. I believe that we have a good word from the Lord tonight. The past few weeks, we've been talking about you know, Hebrews 12, 29, that for our gods are consuming fire. And we, in order to have that consuming fire in your life, you've got to respect him for who he is. But, so tonight, we're going to be moving in a little bit of a different direction, but still kind of along the same lines in a way. But the title of my message tonight is called Give It Up. I want you guys to say, Give It Up. So we're going to be starting over here in the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. It says, Jesus says, Come to me, all of you who are weary, and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. The reason this verse is so awesome to me, and I love it so much, is because Jesus is saying that, look, we've got stuff going on in our life. We've got school. We've got relationships. We've got all these things. We've got anxieties. We've got fears. We've got worries going on in our brain. We've got all these things that we're dealing with. But what he's saying is, if you come to me, if you let me handle this, then I will give you rest. Hey, let's be off our phones for a little bit, guys. Let's put our phones away just a little bit, you know, just for a few minutes. Unless, unless you're doing notes. You know, I get that. I get that. But if you're not doing notes... I'd appreciate if you're not on your phone. So anyway, just a little quick tidbit there. Yeah, so God is always trying to say to you, like, look, come to me if you want rest. Come to me so that way I can give you something that that, will release you from this burden, so I can release you from this, this bondage that you feel. I understand there's a lot of stuff happening in the world right now. The school that you're in right now, it's hard. You got a 9 out of 15. I understand. Maybe that's a little bit stressful for you. You got stuff that, you got, that you're dealing with, but Jesus is saying, like, look, I'm here for you in all these things, and I want to be there for you. Come to me, and I will give you rest for your souls. So with that in mind, I want us to pray and get our hearts ready to receive this, because ultimately what we're trying to get to today is we're trying to give it up to him. Everything that we hold on to, we want to give it to him, so that we can fulfill the calling he has for our life. Amen? So let's pray real quick. Father God, I thank you for this amazing night that we get to come together to worship you and honor you, Father God. I thank you in these next few moments that we have together that you will inspire us, that you will encourage us, that you will equip us, that you will teach us and help us grow in you, Father God. I thank you for everything that you are and what you're doing in this place. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So another scripture that is very popular that most of you guys probably already know is John 3.16. And whether you know it by heart or not, you've probably heard about it. If you're a football fan, you've probably seen it in stands. Because for whatever reason, John 3.16 is in football. I don't really understand it. I don't get it. But it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. But I love the next verse. Over in verse 17 it says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. I love this because when you really grab a hold of what this verse is saying is he sent his son into the world to rescue us. See, Jesus died so that way we can have salvation, but he also died to give us this abundant life. You remember John 10, 10, how I've talked about that quite a few times now? He died to give you an abundant life and have it in the full. So we've been rescued from sin. We've been rescued from bondage. We've been rescued from lack. We've been rescued from unhealthy things. We have been rescued, but in order to have this rescue, I feel like we have to understand that he's the rescuer. We have to accept him, not just as our Lord and as our Savior, but accept him as the one that's going to rescue us from the things that we go through. That we can trust him in our anxieties. We can trust him in our fears. We can trust him in our insecurities. We can trust him in our problems, the things that we go through. I understand the things that you go through are probably very real, and you're like, I don't know how Jesus is going to help me with that. I don't know how he's going to help you with it either, but I know that he can. (laughs) We have to understand that when we trust him with these things, He's going to perfect things in our life. And this is what I understand over here in Philippians 4, 6 through 9. It says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for what he's already done. How many of you guys woke up this morning? All your hands should be up right now because you woke up this morning. Thank God you woke up today. How many of you guys are breathing right now? 
Yeah. Thank God that you have breath in your lungs right now. How many of you guys got to eat at least a meal today? Yeah. Thank God that you got some food today. There, there's things in your life that God is providing for you. So, but then you go on a little further. It says, then you'll experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. So we don't need to worry about these things. We don't need to have these things in our own. It talks over there in Matthew 11. It was saying, come to me with your burdens. Come to me with these fears. Come to me with these anxieties. Hand them over to me so you can have rest. Pray about everything, Philippians 4. Tell God what you need and thank him for what he's done, and then you'll experience God's peace. I have a way I want to illustrate this for you. Who feels like they are a strong person? Is there anyone in this room that's strong? Like how strong? Like, do you think you can carry 50 pounds? You can pick up 50 pounds? Sophie, you want to come pick up 50 pounds for me? Come over here. I got, I got, I got some weights for you right here. Come over here. Come on. You volunteer, girl. Get up over here. You want to do it? You got 50 pounds? Come up, Scott. Anna, get up here. I, I need two volunteers. So I got 50 pounds over here. I'm going to get you 50 pounds over here. All right. All right. So what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to pick up these 50 pounds. I want you to hold them. Yeah, go for it. I don't care. You can do it however you want. I don't want you to hurt yourself, so don't, don't pull something. You got it? Yeah, Scott. Anna, you guys up here, like bosses, do you please do not hurt yourself. <laughs> this will be the last time I'm allowed to preach. <laughs> um, all right. Awesome. You guys are doing really good. Now, do me a favor. With these weights in your hands, I want you guys to do jumping jacks. <laughs> jumping jacks. Like, like jumping jacks. I want you guys to jumping jacks with these. <laughs> well, with that in mind, Noah, Noah, would you come down here? What I want you to do, Noah back here, Nomad, Noodle Boy, he is going to represent Jesus. And what I want you guys to do is I want you to give these weights to Jesus. Give these things to him. Let, let, let no mad Jesus over here hold these weights for you. Now, now the, oh, oh, big strong Jesus over here. <laughs> All right, now that he is holding on to, now do your jumping jacks. Look how much easier it is to do these jumping jacks on you're not holding on to these weights. But now Jesus has got it for you. Yeah, awesome. Thank you very much. Appreciate you guys. Now, if you could just stand here for the rest of the, <laughs> you got to hold these weights for the rest of the time. I'm just kidding. You can put them down. <laughs> So it's just a very simple illustration, a silly illustration, I know. But the reason that I say this is because I feel like for whatever reason, we feel like these things that we got going on in our life, whether it be family issues or relationship stuff or schoolwork or, or these, these thoughts that we have going on in our mind, we feel like we've got to deal with them. We feel like this is our burden to bear. Like, I've got to do this. I've got to get through this. This is my hill to climb. This is the thing that I've got to overcome. These are the people that I need to please so that way I can be liked in school. These are the people that I need to please so that way I can go further in this career or whatever it might look like for you. These are things that we deal with. We all deal with. We all have these things that go on in our life. But for, reason, for whatever reason, we cannot let go of them. We can't do what God has called us to do if we're too busy focusing on this stuff. If we're focusing on our anxieties, if we're focusing on our fears, if we're, now I'm not saying that they're not real, because they are, I understand, I get it. Like I'm saying, these are very real issues. But if we don't have the, the wherewithal <laughs> to, within ourselves to give it over to God, we're not gonna be able to perform. We're not gonna be able to fulfill what he's asked us to do because we're too focused on us rather than our focus is on him. If we read further, over here in Philippians 4. So verse 7, it says, you, then you'll experience God's peace after you tell him what you need, after you give over your cares, after you give over your anxieties, then you'll experience the peace. And in verse 8, it says, one final thing, fix your thoughts on what is true, honorable and right and pure and lovely and, and, and admirable. These things are excellent and worthy of praise, putting into practice all you've learned and received from me, everything you've heard me see, heard from me and saw me doing, then the God of peace will be with you. If we focus on Jesus that is the rescuer rather than our issues, 
If we focus our thoughts on him, then we have our peace. Then we're able to walk in a confidence knowing that, look, I know that I'm dealing with this stuff right now, but God's got my back. I know that I'm dealing with this issue right now, but God's got my back. He's the one that's going to give me rest tonight, even though I got this stuff going on. He's going to be the one that's going to help me through it. Over here in 1 Peter 5, 6 through 7, it says, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. He cares about this stuff that you're going through. He cares that that maybe you didn't do so good on your test. He cares that maybe, you know, people are picking on you at school. He cares that maybe you're having issues with your mom and dad. He cares that maybe you don't have a a good relationship with this, that, and the other. He understands that you're going through these things, but what he's trying to say is you got to be humble and understand that you got to give it to me. I will take care of it for you. Don't don't look at yourself like you've got to fix the problem because I'm going to help you fix the problem. When we humble ourselves, we're saying like, look, I can't do it. I'm not the one that's qualified to do this. And that's okay. That's good because he says that that's when you're going to be able to be exalted. And we we cast all these things on him because he cares for us. Because Jesus cares for us, he rescued us. Amen? Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. It doesn't feel right in our natural mind to to let these things go because we care about them so much. You care about your mom and your dad. You care about your best friend. You you care about, you know, this and that. You care about school and, and all these things. You should care about them, but what I'm trying to tell you and what God is trying to say tonight is don't think out of your own head. Think with me. (laughs) Use me. Help help me help you. Let me help you. And then he will make your path straight. I I think sometimes if we try to do things in our own way, we're going to mess it up. You know, we're not the ones that are supposed to do it. You know, we've been talking about it a couple weeks ago. I believe it might have been last week, but we we said that Jeremiah 29 11 says that he has plans for your life. So they're his plans. You know, if we want to see the plan through, we should probably go to God because he's the one that made the plan. So if we try to do it ourselves, we might mess up the plan. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like we don't need to deal with this because it's not our plan to begin with. God is going to be the one that helps you through. Amen. Over in Romans 8, 27, it says, And he who searches hearts know what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. For those who he foreknew, also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined and called, those whom he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he glorified them. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for you, anxiety has no power over you. If God is for you, these issues that you have with a person have no power over you because he's going to help you through it. He's going to work everything together for your good. Maybe you had something happen in your life that's really bad. Maybe you had an issue. Maybe you had a sickness or maybe you had something going on and maybe it's hindered you from going and being able to do what you feel like you're supposed to be doing right now. But God is saying, I will perfect it and I will turn it around for your good, but you got to give it over to me. You got to let me handle it. You got to let me walk you through it. But but it's only for those that, that love God. And I, this verse is always just so interesting to me because, you know, when you love someone, there's trust there, right? I mean, your mom, you know, you trust your mom, like you love your mom, your best friend, you love your best friend, you trust them. So if you love God, then you can trust him. And you can trust that God is who he says he is. You know, we sang that song a few minutes ago. He's a man of his word. And if he did it in John 3, 16 and 17, where he came into this world and he saved us, and that means he's constantly being our rescuer. He's constantly able to be our savior. He's constantly able to help us throughout anything that we have issues with. But we got to give it to him. 
I want you to be successful in what God has called you to do. I want you to be successful in your school life. I want you to be successful in your friendships. I want you to be successful in every single area. But you got to go to God with it. You got to seek God for your answer. You know, Matthew 6 talks about, you know, with the, the lilies have all the, oh, let's just go to it. I feel like I'm going to butcher it if I try to say it myself. Here we go. I'm going to go to it real quick. Matthew 6, I believe it's in, uh, starting on my phone. My phone must have it. Matthew 6, if you got your Bibles, you can flip through. If you got your phones and you want to open your Bible app, I'm giving you permission to do so. Okay. Matthew 6, 25. It says, I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns for your heavenly father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? Can all your worries about these things add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon in all of his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for the wildflowers that are here today and thrown in the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have little faith? Don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat, what will we drink, what will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers but your heavenly father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. Live righteously, and he will give you everything that you need. Don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Seek God first. I know that was a lot. That was a lot going on there, but basically it's it's a big thing saying, I know you have thoughts and desires and dreams for your life, and there's a place that you see for yourself that you want to be, that you want to get to. But what God is saying is if you seek him first and you live from your righteous position that Jesus Christ has given you, he will give you everything that you need. If you seek him first in your problems, if you seek him first in your fear, if you seek him first in your insecurity, if you seek him first in your anxiety, if you think him first in your, in your confusion, give you everything that you need. That's a promise from God. Amen? Give it up to him. Everything that concerns you, everything that bothers you, everything that worries you, give it up to him. He'll give you rest.